You are tuned in to On Air with Chris Shanafel. Welcome back On Air with Chris Shanafel as we continue our Player Spotlight series with the 2020 NFL Draft. And I am now joined by one of the top quarterbacks in this year's draft class out of Slippery Rock University. By way of Aldosa State, it's a pleasure to welcome on reigning Harlan Hill Award winner, Roland Rivers the third. Uh, Roland, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat. How's everything going, man? Yeah, what's going on, Chris, man? Thank you for having me. Uh, everything's going good. I'm just getting back from a throwing session and amazing out there and in a really good place right now. So, uh, you know, excited about everything. Yeah, as you should be. Uh, you know, you're just finishing up a great career at Slippery Rock University. Now here you are getting ready for uh, the biggest interview of your life up to this point, your pro day. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with your journey, Roland, I mean, you, you spent the first two years of your collegiate career at Valdosa State. As a sophomore in 2017, you would miss the entire uh, season due to an injury to your throwing shoulder. And by 2018, you were, you were the starting quarterback at Slippery Rock University. Um, can you just talk about what went into your decision to transfer from Valdosta and how Slippery Rock ultimately won you over? Uh, yeah, so like you said, I started off at Valdosta State. I, was, I graduated high school in 2015, so I redshirted as a true freshman and, and split time with the, with the senior as a redshirt freshman and going into my redshirt sophomore year in 2016 was my first full-time uh, me being the first uh, first year first time starting as a full time guy for Valdosta State, I'd say, and um, you know was having a really good year and got injured late in, in that season and missed the last three games of 2016. I missed all of 2017 rehabbing from my uh, my torn labrum and my throwing shoulder. So I uh, went through a tough time in that, you know, just not knowing what would be the outcome. You know, if I had the, the arm I had once before, if I'd be able to continue playing quarterback if I had to change my position. But, you know, it was a lot of late nights and early mornings and of just consistently wanting to get back on the football field, wanting to get back doing what I love and, and throwing the football. So I was able to overcome that injury and going into the 2018, 2018 season, once I, you know, fully rehabbed and was ready to go, I just I kind of felt like I needed a change of scenery, like I wanted to get away from home a little bit and um, just test test my faith. If I'm a leader down here at Valdosta, then I'll be a leader no matter where I go. And, you know, I had um, a good relationship with Justin Roper. He was my offensive coordinator at Slippery Rock. He was my quarterback coach my freshman year at Valdosta State. And so just felt like maybe it would be a good thing to go up there and reunite with him at Slippery Rock. Their quarterback the year before, Tanner Gary, had a really good year. And, you know, I know that they, he graduated and they didn't have any experienced quarterback on the roster. So I felt like maybe I could go up there and, and help that team get to a championship. So I um, decided to go up there and had two phenomenal years up at Slippery Rock, you know, finishing off with the best team in history, 13-1 uh, and one record. And, you know, on an individual note, winning that Harlan Hill, it was, it was amazing. You know, no no really better way to go out on an individual standpoint than that. So, um, you know, very appreciative of my, my time at both Valdosta and Slippery Rock. And you mentioned the success that you had here the past two years at Slippery Rock. Let's just uh, revisit that. I mean, short time at Slippery Rock, you rewrote the record books two seasons. You threw for a record high 7,181 yards, 80 touchdowns. And on the ground, you rushed for nearly 1,300 yards and 16 more touchdowns. All of that in just 26 career games in which you finished 23-3. and uh, at the Rock. This past season in 2019, specifically, Roland, you became the program's very first winner of the Harlan Hill Award. Uh, you went for over 4,400 yards through the air and another 700 yards and nine more touchdowns on the ground. A very impressive season, no doubt about it. Your efforts allowed Slippery Rock to go on and have an undefeated regular season, 11-0. and 0. You guys made a deep run in the D2 playoffs before uh, being knocked off by Minnesota State Mankato. I know you obviously would have loved to have finished the season hoisting the national championship trophy, Roland, but looking back, just how special of a season was 20. 2019 and to win the Harlan Hill Award in your final season of your collegiate career. But what's that mean to you, just knowing the adversity that you went through over the years to end your collegiate career as the best player in Division II football? Yeah, I actually take my Slippery Rock career, you know, started off with 2018. Uh, you know, when I decided to transfer up there, I had about two weeks to try to learn that offense prior to the first game of the season. I mean, it was kind of a last-minute decision for me, but I 
to, to transfer up to Slippery Rock, but it was something I just felt like I needed to do that had to happen. So I didn't get to start the first game of the season, and um, you know, which is understandable with you know me just now getting to the program, only having about two and a half weeks to try to learn the offense. So I, I had to deal with even more adversity when I got to Slippery Rock. It wasn't just handed to me, mm-hmm. you know, on a, on a platter like that, and, and you know, I had to sit down and, and wait, you know, and and trust that all of this would work out, that I didn't go through what I went through and to, to not get up there to Slippery Rock and play on the field. So, uh, you know, I would rather for rather to get on the field when I got up there on, you know, my ability to, you know, do what I do on the field and my leadership ability and whatnot. But uh, both of the quarterbacks who were ahead of me, they ended up getting hurt the second game of the season and both out, one out for the rest of the season. And the other one was out for maybe three or four weeks. And so now it's the third game of the season. We're one and one. And now I'm um, implemented into the starting role. And uh, we, we went on that first game I started. We put up 42 points in the first half. I had four touchdowns that first half. And we went on to dominate that game and win eight straight games. We won the PSAC West. Um, I was awarded first team all-conference. We, we had a deep run in the playoffs that year, too, in 2018, making it to the uh, quarterfinals. And um, got to play with, with Wes Hills, who's currently on the Detroit Lions right now. And just a really special a year where no one, you know, expected Slippery Rock to do anything. We kind of snuck up on a lot of people, and it was it was a lot of fun, you know, and uh, and going up there and being taken in by Slippery Rock, you know, just like like family, like I belonged up there. And so definitely enjoyed 2018 and going into the 2019 season, um, I had to be a part-time student in the spring in order to play in this past fall because in Division Two you get 10 full-time semesters to be enrolled and play sports. So that was that 2018 season was my ninth um, semester in school. So this past spring, I wasn't able to work out with the, with the team. <laughs> I couldn't uh, I couldn't watch film with the coaches. We got a new offensive coordinator. I was un- unable to watch film with him. Uh, like I said, I couldn't participate in the spring, couldn't do workouts. I had to watch spring ball from the stands. I was sitting out there, just me in the middle of the stands, out there in the cold in, in Pennsylvania. And, watching my team, you know, put in work, wishing I could be out there. I uh, was unable to be on scholarship. When you're a part-time student, you can't be on scholarship. It's a violation of, uh, of NCAA rules. So even more adversity, you know, and, and I could have let that defeat me and not work out, not stay in shape and, 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 and whatever. But, you know, I continued to work out. You know, I continued every day, late nights, early mornings. Like I said, getting schoolwork done to going to the, to the gym, working out, the throwing, just doing everything I can to make sure that I'm still getting better, still putting in work for my team. And uh, over this past summer, I was able to go up and train at Test Football Academy up in New Jersey. And uh, uh, just an amazing experience there working with uh, Coach Tony Raciope, the quarterback coach who works up there. He does a phenomenal job. I, I really credit a lot of the season I had to being able to work and learn from him and, and Gear, the director uh, up there at, um, at Test, pushing me to become a better athlete and, and just real, really good vibes and, and good facility, great facility, great people up there. So I was able to train up there and kind of help take my game to another level. I came back down to Slippery Rock in July with the team with our summer workouts and, you know, was there and, and got better with my teammates there. And going into the season, we, we already knew the expectation. You know, after going to the quarterfinals in 2018, we knew as a team that, that national championship is next goal. That's what we have to do. And so... Um, you know, had a really special season. You know, Coach Adam Newbauer, he was our new offensive coordinator who came in from Georgetown, did a phenomenal job and, and you know, just really learning everybody's playing ability and getting the ball to our playmakers and, and scheme and defense, and allowing me as the quarterback to, to be the guy, you know, being able to make checks at the line of scrimmage and, and just do a bunch of different things and, and to help not only the team put, put guys in position, but giving me that freedom as well as the quarterback to when I'm out there on the field, if I see something, I can go with it. And it allows you as a quarterback to play with so much more confidence when your coach gives you that ability to, to run the show. And, um, you know, had great receivers. And Henry Litwin and Jermaine Wynn, since you Sweden, Kadir Dixon stepped up, you know, after our, our starter, Victor Talley, got injured. And offensive line did a great job. We had an All-American, all-conference guys on the offensive line and our defense. Our special teams, Jake Chaplin, our kicker breaking the all-time PSAC scoring record. I mean, it's just a phenomenal season. You know, not only myself, but my teammates as well, led by coach Sean Lutz, you know, grinding it out, pushing us to be great and, and getting the most out of us. So 
definitely enjoyed my, my time at Smith Rock this past year. It was probably the funnest football season I ever had in my life and um, thoroughly enjoyed it, thoroughly enjoyed playing with my brothers and, and putting on for Western Pennsylvania as a, as a whole. And um, uh, like you said, we'll, we'll definitely have love to end it that season with a national championship. That's always a goal of mine. And, but I know that, that one day I will be a champion because I have that, that mentality and that mindset that I'm, I'm going to be a champion one day. But, you know, still a phenomenal season nonetheless. And winning that Harlan Hill Trophy, being crowned the best player in all of Division Two. I mean, it's a lot of Division Two schools and a lot of Division Two football players. And to, to be named the, the best one uh, from this year is, is, is an honor. You know, I'm humbled by it. It makes me want to work even harder. I want to be the best Harlan Hill Trophy winner ever. I want to go out and have the best football career from any Harlan Hill Trophy winner and really represent Harlan Hill himself. And, you know, I had a chance when I got the award to meet with his son and and his family and stuff like that, and they told me a little bit about his story. I believe he was the last pick in the NFL draft and went on to have a great career. So, you know, he was an underdog and, and all of that, too. So, um, you know, and, and just represent that name and represent Slippery Rock and Broad Off State, my family, to the best of my ability. So um, it's a phenomenal year. Wouldn't, wouldn't change anything other than losing that Minnesota State game. But, like I say, still an amazing year nonetheless. An amazing year nonetheless, to say the least. Roland, I mean, and, and, you know, some of these limitations that you had this time last year, heading into your senior year, I had no idea. I mean, the limitations of not being able to be with the team uh, throughout spring ball or, or even catch up with the offensive coordinator, kind of get a grasp of what maybe uh, some of the new offensive play calls would be, and, and then to come out guns blazing the way that you did this past season. I mean, a lot of people thought that maybe this offense would take a step back uh, because Wes Hills went on to the NFL and now he's on the Detroit Lions, and that was not the case at all. Um, again, we're chatting with 2020 NFL Draft prospect, quarterback out of Slippery Rock University, Roland Rivers the third, one of the top quarterbacks in this year's draft class. This is a guy that I thought should have been invited down to Mobile, Alabama in the Senior Bowl. That was not the case. But, Roland, you did get an opportunity to participate in the Hula Bowl uh, down in uh, Hawaii, a college football all-star game. Uh, you know, the coaches of that game was former Jets and Bills head coach Rex Ryan and um, you were a uh, coach on the other team uh, by Falcons head coach Mike Smith. Uh, what was that experience like being around pro coaches and, again, playing against other prospects that at the end of the day have the same goal as you, and that's to play in the NFL? Yeah, going down to Hawaii was definitely uh, an amazing experience as well. Uh, getting coached by by guys who, who are coached at the highest level and just seeing the way that their calmness, Mike Smith's calmness was was unreal almost, but he was still an effective leader with every word that he said. And and one day, you know, once football is done and said said and done for me, I like to get into coaching and stuff like that. So I really wanted to make sure I learned as much as I could and really watch how he moves and had opportunities to have conversations with him and talk to him and stuff like that. So that definitely was was amazing. And, and just getting around those other top top players, you know, what I mean, top Division One guys, and just feeling like, yeah, I belong here. I'm not here for no reason, you know, and. You know, I, I am who I who I think I am. I, I believe I'm, like you say, one of the top quarterbacks in this class. I believe I'm the best thrower of the football in this draft class. And um, and you know, but it, it definitely was amazing getting down there amongst other guys chasing this, this dream of playing in the NFL and playing professional football. So um, it inspired me. And, and just that week down in Hawaii as well is beautiful. It was my first time down there, and that ocean and that that water and just that that whole environment is something that I, I really would like for everybody to see. And I recommend any player coming out, if you don't get invited to those, to the NFL PA or East West Shrine and, and, and um, the senior bowl to, to look into going down to the hula bowl it was an amazing experience. They really, uh, really catered to us well the whole week we were down there. So um, great experience. Roland, when did you realize that you're going to pursue a professional football career? I'm sure it's always been the dream. Um, but when did you decide that you're really going to give this thing a shot? Uh, well, when I was nine years old, that's when I when I was nine years old. It's when I said to myself, I wanted to be a, a professional quarterback. Um, watching Brett Farr and um, and young Ben Roethlisberger, those two guys, Steve McNair. Um, watching those guys, I was inspired by it. I was always a bigger quarter, bigger kid. You know, I was never a fat kid or anything like that, but just a bigger guy. You know what I mean? And so, when I first went out for football, I started off as a, as a right tackle and nose guard when I was uh, nine, 10 years old and um, transitioned 
the fullback, the tight end. And when I was 12, they allowed me to play quarterback. You know, when you were young back in those days, they probably throwing it a lot more now than when I was, you know, 9, 10, 12 years old and stuff like that. So I would get in, and my role was to was to throw it deep. You know, we get in, we probably threw five passes a game, if that. So, you know, I'd get in and throw my deep ball, throw a touchdown. That was kind of my role as, as a 12-year-old. And, um, you know, transitioned into high school and was a tight end. I started varsity tight end as a freshman and as a sophomore and, and transferred to high schools and, and got my opportunity to play quarterback. I played in three games as a junior. Uh, I got hurt early on my junior season, and, and um, the guy ended up who started my Quavis Johnson with the Morehouse, he uh, ended up dropped, taking us to 9-0 and and got hurt the ninth game of the season. And uh, we were 9-0, one of the best teams in Georgia. And the 10th game, now I'm thrust into that starting role again and ended up throwing the game with a touchdown in overtime to give us a 10-0 record and, and uh, division champions, conference champions, and went into the first round of the playoffs and um, threw over 350 yards, five, six touchdowns, and all in the in the news and in the paper, like, who is this quarterback, Roland Rivers, where is he coming from? You know, in the state playoffs like that, having a game like that. And then in the next game, the second round of the playoffs, I I, I guess you could say through the, the game losing interception, the game that, that really hindered our chances to winning late in that game. And that, that really motivated me. I told myself that I would never let that happen again. And um, that's really, again, where I know I took my love for the game, my love for being a quarterback to to another level, like, Every day I was committed to getting better as a quarterback. You know, after I saw what I could do in those three games, I threw for 900 yards and 12 touchdowns and all in three games. So it was like, wow, I can really do this quarterback thing because I was a tight end before. So that, that's probably where my, my dreams really took off right there was, was after my junior year of high school. Again, he's Roland Rivers, the third quarterback out of Slippery Rock University 2020 NFL Draft Prospect. A few more questions for you, Roland, and then I'll let you go. I really appreciate your time. I know you're from the state of Georgia, so I'm sure it was pretty cool to learn from uh, Mike Smith down in Hawaii. i seen that you've uh, been working out with Falcons quarterback Matt Ryan as well. How's that going? What advice has he given you as you go through this draft process? Yeah, I've... I've uh also worked with Cam Newton my senior year of high school. I was on Cam Newton's all-star team at 7-on-7, oh, seven wow. seven, and we went down to Bradenton, Florida, the IMG Academy, and competed in the national 7-on-7 seven seven tournament. So um, going into my senior year, that like that also increased my draft, you know, with, with becoming a professional quarterback, being handpicked by Cam Newton to be his all-star team quarterback was, was definitely um, – was, was I mean, I couldn't, can't even put it into words on how I felt back then as a 17-year-old, but – um yeah, I got the opportunity to to uh, to hit the field, seeing Matt throw and work, and you know it wasn't we didn't have much time because guys out there putting in work, you know what I mean. But um, I was training at th- with three D Q B is who I was uh, actually out there working with um, Adam Dado and Tom House, I believe, and uh, just out there getting better. They trained a lot of professional NFL quarterbacks. I got a chance to meet Jacoby Brissett like today after my workout, Deshaun Kaiser, Cody Kessler, Easton Stick. Those guys, Mason Rudolph, they were out there as well, you know, getting ready to work out. So that's been amazing, getting trained by these guys who, who uh, you know, do a really good job. They've trained Tom Brady, Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, any Drew Brees, a lot of the top guys. So so being out there amongst them and getting coached by them has helped tremendously and, and has been improving my game. But it was, a, it was definitely an honor being able to meet Matt Ryan, you know, a guy who I grew up watching and tried to emulate his, his game and, and learn from him, and he's a really genuine dude and took the time out to kind of talk to me. I told him where I'm from in Atlanta, and he's familiar with it and all. So um, great opportunity to meet him and, and other guys as well. Well, you certainly belong, no doubt about that. Uh, you know, Roland, wh- whether it was down at the Hula Bowl or uh, the past couple of years at uh, Slippery Rock, ha- have you been able to meet with any teams, any conversations with any scouts, any idea how they're viewing you as a prospect? Uh, yeah, well, throughout this my senior season at Slippery Rock, I, I met with over you know over 25 teams. I say maybe 27. I know the teams I didn't meet with, but I'm, I won't speak on that. Uh, you know, what I mean, maybe they're uh, trying to stay away and sneak up on me or something <laughs> like that. But uh, but uh, I mean, right now I'm not really sure to be honest where I'm being considered or, or where, what rankings they have I me. Mean, I know a lot of these teams they want to see my arm in person. And see see my see my ability to throw it in person. You know, I didn't play too many games on ESPN or on ABC, and 
to really show what I could do. You know, they they have my film and all, but they they got to see it in person, and that's something that I'm excited to to do because I I know I I throw it, I believe like no other. Um, like I said, I believe I got the best arm talent in this in this draft class, and and I, I mean that comes from hard work. I put in a lot of work, and and um, you know I'm excited to, to show in, in front of professional scouts and all. So uh, right now I'm scheduled to do pro day. Uh, you know, at Slippery Rock, I plan on being there for Slippery Rock's pro day. But also have like Penn State and Pitt and and Villanova. Um, those three schools are, are options to do pro day as well. So just trying to filter everything out and get in the right place in the right situation to showcase my abilities. I'm in Chicago. A lot of our listeners are fans of the Chicago Bears, Roland. There, there seems to be a question about the quarterback position here in Chicago with Mitchell Trubisky. I think personally you would be a great fit in this Matt Nagy offense with the Bears. Is that a team that you've met with or had any type of conversations with uh, over the past couple of months or, or a couple of years? Yeah, I know the Bears did come through Slippery Rock this past year, but you know it would be amazing to play on any NFL team. You know, that's That's definitely – no matter where, you know, you get get an opportunity to play at the highest level mm-hmm. is um you know, that's that's first and foremost. I don't care where I'm at, you know, that's amazing. But um but being able to play in Chicago would, would be awesome as well. Even if, you know, Mitchell Trubisky is there as well. I think he's a, a great talent. You know, I think he's a talented quarterback for sure. And um, you know, but but getting the opportunity to be there on playing for that historic franchise, you know, the nineteen I bear team, everybody knows about them, you know, that's that's the combination right there. So just a historic franchise like that. I got a buddy in Steven Denmark who I went to Vaught Austin with who got drafted by the Bears. So I know they, they, they aren't they don't shy away from looking at division two talent. And um, you know, that like I say, any team would be amazing, but you know, Chicago would be awesome too playing for that historic franchise. I don't know much about the offense or Matt Nagy, but maybe I could, I can go do some uh fit in that. Well, it would only be right to uh, bring the Harlan Hill Award Trophy winner to the team that uh, the, uh, Mr. Harlan Hill played uh, for uh, most of his career and won an NFL yeah, MVP right. trophy right. too. So uh, that's certainly uh, uh, you know something I'm pounding the table for. I would like to see uh, the organization bring somebody in like yourself to uh, push Trubisky and, and maybe possibly win that starting job. But anyways, Roland, I know this uh, interview has gone a little bit longer than expected, but I, I can't tell you how much I really appreciate your time and how much I enjoyed chatting with you. Uh, I, I really thought it was a fantastic interview, and I really do appreciate your time. One last question before I let you go. It's a question I end all of my prospect interviews with, and uh, that is, let's say we have all 32 NFL general managers that are listening to this very interview. Why should they want the quarterback out of Slippery Rock University, the Harlan Hill Award Trophy winner, Roland Rivers III, a part of their team? Well, if you're looking at the physical standpoint, because the game of football is played in between those lines, uh, my upside, I believe, is, is one that's, different from a lot of quarterbacks coming out in this draft um you know i i have i barely scratched the surface i feel as up to to where how how good i can be and so um you know i'm a great guy to bring in to to really develop you know and, and get to the point where where i can take over and, and be a, a starter you know or even coming in right away i mean if i'm thrust into that role of having to go out on football and lead i'm gonna do it it's uh second nature to me being out there in between those lines so I mean, they get a guy who's, who's, you know, determined to be great. You know, that Harlan Hill trophy wasn't won off of just uh, waking up out of the bed and going out there and just playing, you know, putting a lot of extra work. And so, uh, you know, seeing my extra work pay off the way it did, it makes me want to do so much more and accomplish so much more. So I'm a guy who's definitely going to, gonna, you know, be at the facility all the time, always looking to get better, watch a lot of film, uh, make the guys around me better. I'm, I'm, I'll commit to the game of football. I've already have. I made it up in my mind a long time ago that this is what I wanted to do. And, um, you know, things have been falling in place for me to get my opportunity. So, uh, you know, whatever team, you know, sees that and recognizes that and, and, and wants me to be a part of that organization and not just needs the quarterback to come and play for them is a team I'd love to go to. But, um, you know, whatever opportunity and whatever capacity I'm blessed to play this game, is, you know, I'm going to make the most out of it. So, um you know, I'm a hardworking guy. I want to do a lot of great things in the community and, and really be a positive influence, use my voice for something other than just, you know, being a football player. I want to actually go out into my community and to, to you know, work with the youth. I worked at the Boys and Girls Club when I was at Valdosta State during the summertime when I was injured. 
And, um, you know, that really changed my life being around those kids and, and seeing how they looked up to me in a time where I was kind of feeling sorry for myself, you know, my injury, not being able to play, but they still looked up to me, you know, as if I was, you know, a Cam Newton or somebody like that. And I, I didn't feel like I was anybody at the time. So just knowing the impact that I could have and being a professional football player going into the communities and, and changing lives would be amazing as well. So uh, I, I believe that, that, you know, this isn't – I'm not choosing to play football. Football chose me, and I chose it back. You know what I mean? I love it. I love the grind. I love getting better. 365 days a year is what I love. And so, uh, you know, that's my take on it. So hopefully that wasn't too much. That's, that's the honest truth. Not at all, man. Not at all. Rolling big things coming your way. Really looking forward to seeing what the next couple of months have in store for you. Really looking forward to seeing how you perform at that Slippery Rock Pro Day and see if you get in one of these bigger programs, Pro Days as well. But congratulations on all the success, man, this past season specifically. It was a joy to watch. Really enjoyed it. And to see you hoist that uh, Harlan Hill Award trophy, um, you know, that was really awesome. So congrats on all the success. Um, I know you, you really worked your ass off and you've overcome a lot to get to this point. So uh, it's really great to see when uh, people like yourself uh, relish in these type of opportunities. So, again, congratulations, man. Hope to keep in touch and um, really wishing you the best uh, the, in the next coming months. I definitely appreciate it. Thanks again for having me on. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, appreciate you you know, taking the time out to want to talk to me and going after guys, these Division Two guys, and, and just being a – a vocalist and advocate for guys like me. Definitely appreciate it and hope to speak to you again and, and go Blazers and, and go Rock.